So many dials, so many switches, so many buttons, so many things to do. Hi, my name is Pete. This is Studio Live Today, and this is the first video in our series here in February 2022, where I will be taking a look at Logic Pro here on the Mac. And uh, yeah, to say I'm a little overwhelmed at the moment is an understatement. But the reason I'm doing this is a couple of things here. Uh, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a rock song here in Logic Pro. I've done minimal training which means I've watched a few videos from a couple of very cool creators that we'll talk about in a, in a moment. And uh, we're going to just get cracking. I'm going to see how we go just creating a song here in Logic Pro. Now, I've made this look much more complicated than I had. I, I wanted to make sure that I, I yeah, made a dramatic entrance, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll make it. We'll take it back to here. It's actually not as bad as it looks like it is. Uh, but it is something that's brand new to me. If you don't know my background, I started creating music on PC, and then I moved into the wonderful world of GarageBand on iOS, on iPad and iPhone. I've recently started dabbling in GarageBand on Mac, and I did the 90-day free trial of Logic Pro. Pro and uh, decided that, hey, it would be a good thing to do here on the channel because I'm not a logic expert. This is going to be absolute noob territory here. Uh, so I don't want you to think this is going to be like complete instructional how to get started in Logic Pro. Uh, it's not. But if you, like me, like following along with someone else's journey, then uh, this video series could be for you. If you do want to uh, to actually explore some professionals, uh, jump over to Music Tech Help Guy or Why Logic Pro Rules. They're two channels I highly recommend. I'll be watching the crud out of them for the next uh, month as well to learn and to get my Myself up to speed. So that's what we're doing here. The gear that I'm using here is my standard stuff that I'm usually using here on the Mac, which is a Scarlett 2i2 interface. And uh, I'm coming through my Zoom live track mixer just so that you can hear everything. So if we go in here, the first thing that, uh, that I learned how to do in Logic Pro is to go to my preferences and to go to my audio settings and just check out this. So one of the cool things about the Mac is that we can have an input device here of our Scarlett and we can output it directly to my mixer so that you can hear me talking you can see me and hopefully you can hear all of the audio that's going to come through as a bit of a test let's just hit the play button and make sure that that is indeed working <laughs> there you go kyle kyle will save me kyle is my security blanket of familiarity because uh, kyle is the same drummer and look that's what i've found so far i've had probably two hours so far in my logic pro learning journey and um i've learned that there are some similarities a lot is different but there's a lot of similarities. So if, like me, you're coming from a GarageBand background, yeah, GarageBand is like Logic Junior these days. So uh, I think it's it's going to be okay. We're going to be fine, yeah? All right, let's, let's jump in and, uh, and get started. But before we do that, let's say hello to the folks who are kind enough to be here live. We've got uh, the one and only Tremor Bear. Hello to The Cookie. Hello to Ashley HM. Uh, hello, Michelle Thomas. Uh, Kerry Pe Pepperdy is the guy. So helpful. Oh, very cool. Uh, great. Uh, th thank you, John John. Frank Songs. Uh, thank you to Deep Gravity. Uh, Goran Larson is here as well. S. M. Borthwick. Hello to you. Audible Video. Watch the crud. I know I'm throwing around the C-bombs already. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm playing with Logic. We're experimenting with Logic. Hello to Jade Star. I only caught like four minutes of your show. It's uh, it's school drop-off and, and organization time here in uh, this time of the day. Hello, Alan Dale. Uh, hello to anyone else. And if you're watching on the replay, hello to you. We love you just as much. Uh, thanks for dropping on by. So, we're going to get started here because I've got 56 minutes left and we're going one hour here today and I'm going to see how much I can create in one hour with virtually zero experience here in Logic. So like I said, the first thing I've set up is my audio stuff there. I've thrown a drama track on here. So all I did was go right click and I'm assuming this is the easiest one. I'm sure there's keyboard shortcuts. You're going to be laughing at me a lot during this because you're going to be like, I can't believe Jones doesn't know how to do blah. I, I won't. Uh, so I right clicked here. I went new drama track and I threw, uh, I threw a SoCal Kyle on here just to use as my metronome so uh, that is all we've done so far we'll delete that one uh, and what I normally do here I'm, I'm getting I'm trying to, I'm going to reach up to the screen a bunch of times to try and move things around but if we zoom up in the top right here I've got my drum starting here at uh, bar five because I always give myself some lead in there when we're playing uh, let's grab the guitar the guitar is uh, the guitar is my acoustic it's plugged into uh, the second channel of my Scarlett 2i2 interface so let, this is exciting. Let's uh, let's get ourselves recording for the very first time here. So we're going to uh, right click and we're going to go a new audio track. Boom! There we go. We've got a new audio track there. Now this is where I need to start remembering how to do things over here. Okay, we've got input two set up there. So input input two. That is the input that I want here on my guitar. I'm going to grab my pick and I'm going to strum. 
nothing there because what I've worked out over time, and by time I mean the two hours I played around with it last night, uh, was you do have to put your monitoring on before you'll actually hear. All right, so uh, this is a new rock song. This is just a riff that I've come come up with. And when I say come up with, um, we'll, prob- we'll probably discover together that it's totally lifted from uh, some other 90s song because that seems to be how I roll these days. But we're going uh, we're gonna to hit record and uh, get in at least the, uh, the little hook, the little intro part of this riff. So uh, let's try this. Uh, actually, we'll turn off the cycle because I don't want a cycle. I just want it to record straight through. We'll come back to track one. <laughs> So clunky. I know me, me not using a touchscreen or at least um, the, the, the simple garage band interface is going to be weird. Let's hit record here. So it's going to record in uh, it's going to record in four bars and then we're going to start right at the start there right here. Space bar to stop. I do remember that. So our audio levels are okay there by the looks of it. It doesn't look like we're clipping. There's a few clicks and pops in there. I think I've got to play around with my audio setup because I think some of the things that I've uh, I've learnt here so far is that in here in our uh, in our audio, uh, yeah, I've got the buffer size at 128. So you're basically when you're using desktop like this, you're playing a bit of a game. Your buffer size is basically how many things can play back at the same time. So when you're, you're tracking or recording, you should try and get the buffer size as low as possible. So you get lowest possible latency. So at the moment, I've got like a 12.6 meg millisecond round trip latency, which isn't great. So maybe I need to uh, crack out something like the Steinberg interface instead of using the Scarlet here to get lower latency. Um, and if I drop that down, I'm going to get a, a, a lower latency. But then you'll get more of those clicks and pops. That's at least what I've experienced thus far. So we'll leave it at 128 for now hit apply we'll come out of there uh in terms of the 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 mac that i'm using it is the uh the mac m1 max so there should be absolutely no if there's any uh issues it's not going to be the hardware it's not going to be the actual mac but it's more likely to be um the 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 software setup that i've got going on here because we're going through two different audio devices we've got logic running we've got Streamyard running here my internet is uh, slightly dodgy at the best of times uh but yeah we'll see how we go uh question from desolate morning is logic on iphone or ipad all oh, the ultimate question barry uh, barry smith is in the in the wings asking the same thing uh no not yet and uh probably not ever uh is my is my vibe these days look at may it may come, you never know, uh, but I don't think it's really on Apple's radar to get uh, to get Garage Bear, uh, Sorry, to get Logic on uh, on the iOS devices anytime soon. All right, now I'm assuming we could just trim our audio like we regularly do. Yet yeah, that all looks good. Let's just play this back and uh, make sure. Oh, it's sounding okay. Yeah, cool. Uh, look, in our haste, uh, I haven't put any processing on this, but this is cool. We're going to learn together how to change this up, how to do this. Uh, we're going to come over here to acoustic guitar, and uh, I like the sound of the natural stereo on the acoustic guitar. And you can see here that in, in the middle section, I think this is called the inspector, is it? I can't remember. Yes, I pressed the I button and it went away. So I press it and it comes back. So in the inspector, you can see what effects are added to this when we do that. So if we solo this guitar now and take a listen... You got a little bit of nice processing on there out of the gate. There's that little crackle. Was that in the recording or the playback? Alright, that was just in the playback. So again, that's just gonna be this battle I have of playing things back. I'm gonna to have to tweak the audio settings. Like I said, I might I might re-employ the Steinberg UR44 that you can see behind me there, because I think that's gonna be a bit more of a uh, a serious interface that we can use for this. 
All right. Uh, so let's. Uh, should we play? We'll play another another version of that just to, for me to practice playing along here and uh, see if we can quickly duplicate a track. So like we'd normally do, we'd right click, and I'm assuming we can duplicate it. Can we? No. La 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 la. There's got to be a track duplication option. There's got to be a create new track from track or something like that. Uh, see, this is where this is where you're like, Johns. Why didn't you do your um do do this before you had us here? Because uh, no, that would be no fun. And you'll be here to help me. You might be able to um actually help me out with this. Uh, no, there's. I would have thought this is exactly where it is, where you can delete it, you can rename it. Surely you can go. Uh, oh, there we go. New track with duplicate settings. Duh! It was right there in front of me the entire time. Uh, so let's let's play uh, this riff again uh, to double up these. Command D. There you go. <laughs> All right, so, uh, so we'll come in here. Now, we don't need to monitor the guitar the first time. Everything else should be good, and it should actually be, um, be monitoring with the effects this time. So let's turn our metronome back on, and we'll hit record, and we'll come on, we'll play this again. Two, three, four. completely forgot what I was playing. <laughs> when you're writing something at the same time as you try to play it, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't end up too well, does it? Uh, so maybe we'll abandon that. We'll, we'll, we'll mute that out for now. Maybe we'll come back to it. We'll just use the one track there. So uh, let's, let's uh, try another uh, guitar track. Let's try electric guitar track and see what's uh, under the hood here uh, when, it comes to, uh, when it comes to electric guitars. Uh, should have had these in a better position. Got to see my butt for a sec. And now I'm back. Uh, and it'll give us a chance to try out the tuner. I was going to say, yeah, Smashing Pumpkin style. It's, uh, I, was, I was trying to work out who it sounded like, and I'm wearing my Pumpkins t-shirt here, Alex, because so, I'm kind of harnessing that, uh, that 90s old school vibe here. So let's, uh, let's record an electric guitar part now, shall we? I'm just going to delete that. That was just terrible. I don't want, I don't want that to be here. Uh, let, let's start practicing our... Um, our our keyboard shortcuts. So a new audio track is Command and A by the looks of it. So we go Command A, or no, Shift Command A, was it? Nope, that's the arrangement track. Uh, what is it? Oh, Control Command, oh, I don't know. See, I don't even know, I'm so new to Mac. There you go, it is uh, Option Command A. I'll get used to it, we'll get there. All right, so we've got this one now. We again want input number two, but this time we want to come over here and we want to go to some electric guitar. We're going to use some of the stock electric guitars here. Uh, so let's go some crunch guitar and phew, look at this. We've got all sorts of crunch guitar here. Why don't we go the, uh, the, the pop sparkler? <laughs> that sounds interesting. All right, so we need to uh, once again do our monitoring. Oh, there we go. Let's just try something here, and it may completely not work, but uh, it's worth a shot. Oh, you know what? You know why I'm an idiot? Because I have my um, I have my acoustic tuned in um, in uh, what is it? D sharp in E flat. <laughs> so now I'm going to have to tune my electric down, or just re-record that original part. Uh, what a, what a, what a fool! Anyway, uh, let, let's check out the tuner here because um, Logic does have a pretty darn cool tuner. Maybe we could do some funky transposition. Maybe I can learn how to transpose. Because we could just transpose that acoustic guitar track up a semitone. These are the sort of things that I know people are like, why can't we do this in GarageBand? So maybe we'll learn how to do that once we've got this guitar in tune. Seems to be a pretty decent, accurate tuner. 
Yeah, so we do we do still have a little bit of a clinkety clinkety sound there. All right, now I was playing around with this last night, so let's see if I can remember how we went about this. Um, I think it was under process. No, there was there was something under here. Under uh, there was a place you could go into where you could actually adjust the um, you could adjust the the transposition. And because I did that, I was playing around last night with my daughter. We were practicing by singing some. Um, some some encanto songs but i can't uh, i can't for the life of me remember what section we went to and uh, and how we actually did that so uh what we'll do is i'm actually going to take a step back here and should we delete out that original one i think we might have to unless anyone can really quick like, quickly uh the tuner is spot on accurate yeah cool uh, it is a nice built-in tuner well it looks it looks like it's uh, it's the goods um, you know what I did? You know what I did yesterday? I literally Googled this. Let's see if we can do this real quick because there's going to be a lot of Googling. Logic Pro Transpose Audio is what I searched for. And uh, and I watched this this one video from this one dude. And uh, I'm going to bring it up here because uh, it'll just show me the bit that he went to. Um, Logic is just wrong. All right. No, this is the different dude. Damn it. See, why are there 10 minute videos just to show you uh, one thing? Uh, change the pitch. How to transpose audio. Was it this one? Three minutes 44? No. Uh, no, I can't remember. I can't remember. We probably won't be going there. Uh, transpire slide over the menus on the left. Yeah, over the menus on the left. I think there was one over here, wasn't there? I think this is where I was doing it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to just have to go and, and redo it. Uh, no, it's going to take too long. Oh, there's transpose. All right, transpose. But that's going to take it down a lot. Flex and follow is off. Transpose. Yeah, I thought that there was somewhere else where I did it yesterday, because when we changed that, that's taken it down a whole octave. And we definitely don't want an octave, but it, can we find tune transpose? Uh, yeah, what if we take it down 10 cents? Is that working? I don't think that did anything, did it? No. Find tune. I don't think it's... We're going to be messing around for a long time here to get this. Um, can the transpose button there, why is it only minus 12 and plus 12? Why can't I go minus 1? Anyway, uh, we're going to not mess around any time longer because we're just going to delete this and then we're going to re-record that one afterwards. This is all the fun. This is all the fun in game. I can't even see how to delete. Just press the delete button. Delete. Okay, cool. So uh, yeah, this is the fun of games of, of learning something new. If you're like me, actually, let, let me know in the chat. If you're watching this live or, or if you're uh, on the replay, um, then let me know what you, how do you learn? Do you jump in like this and just try to break it? Uh, or do you sit down and read manuals and follow tutorials? It'd be really interesting to know because... Be interesting to know because I, I obviously try to just break things. All right, let's uh, let's try and record this. We'll just record this uh, as an electric part, uh, and maybe that doesn't actually need any. Um... All right, we'll, we'll we'll play this a bit better. Uh, press and hold the mouse, then scroll down on the transpose to lower the intervals. Ah, there you go. There you go. That, that's what I need to do. All right, let's play that a bit better. We'll delete and we'll come back and we'll uh, we'll, we'll do that because I need it really muted. I need it to be. All right, we're going to do, uh, do it like that. Let's practice my keyboard shortcuts. Ah, all right.
and we'll just let it ring out at the end. All right. Uh, thank you, Sion. Yeah, look, I, I, I like it. I like it, but I'm, I'm not sure if I've just totally uh, stolen it <laughs> from somewhere else. It's oh, very, very, uh, very, very likely that I've stolen it there. Uh, yeah, the tone. Look, for just dialing in a random random tone here on um, on Logic, um, I'm, I'm reasonably impressed straight off the bat uh, by that. Except, you know what? I, I recorded that on that natural stereo one. So was that what I meant to do? Or did I mean to put it down here? <laughs> Let's see what it sounds like on this one instead. I mean, it sounds good on both, doesn't it? That one's got like that nice sparkle to it, I reckon. Uh, so yeah, how do, how do you how do you uh, how do you do, uh, Timothy? I read and do tutorials. Yeah, cool. Um, <clears throat> does not seem so logical, right, Thomas? Uh, I just jump in. Yeah, I do a bit of both. Jump straight in, but watch tutorials as well. Um, keep the GarageBand keyboard sounds you're looking for in the sampler section. Once you select, you can find the sounds you're looking for. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, Jade says, I watch as many tutorials as possible, so don't waste time making small needless mistakes. Uh, I definitely waste time making small needless mistakes. Uh, I think I hear phaser. Yeah, there's a little bit of phaser in this. I'll, I'll, I'll try another uh, phaser and beer. I'll try another tone. Um, has Logic given you the confidence to write sweet riffs? Yeah, probably, probably. Uh, let's let's keep uh, keep going down. Uh, transpose is down in the editor window. Edit. Oh, okay. So like, I have to actually go. Yeah, th this is where I sort of found it last time. I thought it was, thought it was somewhere around here. Well, um, it was. Yeah, it was. Anyway, we'll we'll, we'll learn. We'll learn as we go. Uh, we'll get there. Uh, since I'm also 1979, I love the pump. I know, I love 1979 and uh, the pump. Can you double it on both tracks? Probably. So now that I've simplified that one, um, we'll, uh, we'll, come and, uh, we'll come and play it again. I do the research, I do the archaeology, I study my ass off. Yeah, exactly. Uh, did I get main stage also? I didn't, but I was under the impression that main stage, that Logic has all the main stage instruments. I thought GarageBand doesn't, but if you get main stage, you get all the instruments anyway. I could be wrong on that. Uh, let's, uh, let's, let's duplicate this now that we can know the how to duplicate by going new track with duplicate settings. Uh, let's try a different tone on here. So we want a crunchy good tone. Yeah, we want something with a phaser, don't we? What's, what's the double Brit phaser going to sound like? Uh, we'll just uh, make sure we're only monitoring this one. Oh, wow. That's going to be cool for something else. But no, that's way too fuzzy and crunchy for what we want here. Double flange. That one's not bad. That's a pretty cool tone, I reckon. All right, we're gonna we're gonna go with that one. Hello, Tersh. Hope you're doing well, my friend. Uh, hello, everyone who's dropping on by. Do say good day. Do ask questions. I won't have the answers for you. Uh, I think main stage gives you a front end that works better for live performances. I don't have it though. Yeah, I, I've heard the same. Look, oh, by the way, I buried the lead here. Uh, I've already mentioned it to them, but thank you to my patrons at patreon.com slash Pete Johns. Uh, it is because of you that I was able to actually purchase this because my my patro like my monthly Patreon proceeds from all of you kind people came in. And then two days later, my Logic Pro trial said, you have zero days left. And it's like, would you like to pay $319 for this? And I said, I don't really have $319 to spend on Logic Pro right now, and then I uh, went, oh wait, Patreon, so thank you. So it's a direct correlation between the wonderful folks who support me on Patreon and the fact that uh, I was able to make this purchase. Let's hit record again, and uh, we'll record a double of this guitar, shall we? One, two.
So yeah, one of the weird things is the wa- the lag in the waveform. And I don't know, so again, Logic Pro users will be able to let me know. It's a little annoying. And I've always found it slightly annoying. Uh, by the way, I think I was clipping on that channel there. Um, I think I need to turn the volumes down. I think everything's coming a little bit too hot. Uh, but I did notice that, that um, yeah, when you're in Gar- GarageBand or Logic Pro, it does that bar by bar thing. It's not a real-time waveform. There's probably a setting for it to change it. Um, I'm going to leave it that way um, just to uh, to get used to it for now. Um, yeah, it's a nice, exactly. The guitar tones, I'm, I'm thinking are pretty good. And if, if it's sounding good through that, um, it's sounding good through all of this, then uh, that's good. Uh, through all the compression and all the YouTubes and all the other things, uh, then it's uh, then it's sounding good. Uh, all right, so uh, what we'll do is we'll, we'll do our usual thing. We'll, we'll pan these left and right. Where are we at? 25 minutes? We're, we're, we're making progress here. We're just going to get this little hook together because we got... Uh, this, this is where Pete's going to have to learn how to do things. So um, we do have the overall mix of view, but we can use our views here. So this is, this is the channel. The one on the left here is the channel, and this is our master stereo out. So when we're changing things here... We want to change this one, so we want to pan this to the left. We want to pan. Oh, we've got a panner right there. Don't worry. <laughs> Told you to be interesting learning with me. That's cool. I like that tone. This is, yeah, it's very crowded house, almost crowded house or ice house or something like that. Uh, Jay says, have you messed around with the plus versions of the drum kits? I've found those tend to give a lot more flexibility uh, as far as mixing. Oh, very cool. Yeah, I, look, I noticed that. I noticed that there were these plus drum kits as well. So if we go new drummer track, um, actually it was in the drums themselves as opposed to the the drum. But I think you can change, were they, they were in like the studio kits, I think. Uh, I did see those before, but I can't now. Now I I'm, can't find it. So, uh, yeah, when I was adding when I was adding just drums before, so we don't want you neo soul. You can go. You can get out of here. Uh, when I was playing around before, I was adding just a drum. So I've got a new software instrument, and we wanted it just as a drum kit. There's these producer kits, these plus kits. So there's like the the where was it like the heavy plus kit. Um, and uh, we won't. We'll, we'll just have a quick sample of this because here's the th- cool thing: don't even have a um, don't even have a ki- MIDI keyboard, but you can bring up the typing keyboard, so you can you can actually play around with things. You're right. That kit does sound super cool. Can I use that? Can I use that heavy plus kit? Can I change Kyle to that heavy plus kit? It's on the SoCal kit at the moment. Is there a way? Is there a way to adjust Kyle? Let's adjust our Kyle. Uh, oh, over here. Yep, drum kit, drum kit, producer kits. Let's put Kyle on the heavy plus and let's see. All right, is that going to change the kit sound here? Yeah, that's better, isn't it? Top tip there from Jay. This is going to be a fun month. This is going to be a super fun month. I can I can feel it in my bones. Uh, Jay says I use the plus kits because they're basically a stack of all the pieces and separate tracks. Oh, okay, so you can mix each piece separately. Very cool. Uh, yeah, a bit of a police vibe going on here. All right, bass time. Bass time. We'll do bass and then we'll do some vote. All right, don't do that. Turn off your um. Turn off your monitoring before you unplug your guitar. Do as I say, not as I do. So we'll plug the bass in so we can slap it a bass. All right. All right. So this song is called Yeah, Girl. <laughs> no, but I probably will be. Uh, I'll probably have some sort of thing. Yeah, girl. Uh, hello from work, Gary. It's, it's work, Gary, as opposed to uh, home having fun, Gary. Just in time for some bass. B-A-S-S. All right. So we're going to do new. We're going to do audio track. And we're going to do uh, bass. By the way, yeah, thank you to, um, I'll put it in the description as well, so you can check it out. Uh, electric guitar and bass. We want some uh, clean bass for this one. Um, Funkulator. Okay, we'll go to the Funkulator bass. Uh, but thank you to uh, Music Tech Help Guy. He did a Logic Pro 101 course. I've watched the first four videos. They are the perfect combination of enough depth, but enough simplicity. So they're right up my alley. So the reason I'm not going to create no 101 Logic course is it already exists. It's been created. It's the Music Tech Help Guy. And when I uh, had other questions and wanted to find things out, I went over and checked out um, 
why Logic Pro rules. So I'm sure there's a heap. Oh wow. <laughs> That's a bit funky. Probably don't need that level of funk. What about the flange in stereo? Uh, maybe something like that. We'll play with it. Um, but yeah, th thank you to, uh, to to those two uh, for, for providing very good logic information. I liked it. Um, I, I tried FL Studio, but that stuff was confusing. Yeah, look, I've, uh, I'm confused by this, but I wanted to start because, like I say, I'll be your guinea pig. That, that's the way I'm looking at this. For people that are that are my my core iOS people, don't stress. iOS is my spirit animal. I'm not going away. Um, there you go. Dance Tech has great lessons too. Um, <laughs> it suddenly became a Parliament song. Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't worry. I'm not going away from iOS. iOS is definitely my uh, comfort zone. But I just wanted to try this because I, I get a lot of questions from people saying, "Should I buy a Mac? Should I use GarageBand Mac? Should I try Logic?" And I'm like, I don't know. So I'm going to have to. Uh, I'm going to have to experiment and try around. Let's just try and play along a little bass part. I reckon that's the bass. I reckon it's a, it's a high walking bass. Now, can you hear that we're starting to get a whole bunch of crackles in here? I, I think this is just my audio configuration setup. I think I need to switch out this um this interface and get the the Steinberg back in the mix because I don't think the I don't think the uh, the what is it the Focusrite two i two is cutting it in terms of doing all the audio processing on the fly and then sending it through the Zoom live track. So we'll play around with that uh, as we go, uh, but we'll have to just bear with it while we're tracking. I don't really like that um, sound. I think we need something a bit simpler. So what about uh, what's the stereo traveler? Yeah, we're still getting clicks and pops in there. Um, let's uh, let's grab the tuner because I'm assuming we can tune our bass, and this tuner is actually quality. Seems like a pretty accurate tuner. Could never get my tuning quite right. I don't have the precision. Plus, this is a very cheap bass. Luckily, when it gets in tune, it kind of stays in tune a bit. So it just takes a couple of minutes. Yeah, I thought we were a little bit flat on all those strings. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm the same, Gregory. Gregory says the tune kind of reminds me of something, but I can't place it. I'm the same. I don't know what this tune is reminding me of. And hopefully I'm not super plagiarizing something that I don't even, uh, I'm not even aware of. Let's... Um... <laughs> Let's try the bass up here. It may, it may not work, but we'll, we'll give it a crack. Uh, record. Two, three, four. <laughs> Why did I play early there? All right, undo. All right, let's try that again. I'm not doing well, am I? We get my counts going on here. Oh, because I don't have the. Oh, no, I do have the metronome on. I got no excuse. One, two, three, play. Uh, there we go. Um, well, the, the problem you have is uh, making lots of songs. 
<laughs> uh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I have trouble with is when I started logic was understanding how loud to make things. Yes, since GarageBand has a limiter. I know. I think I think that's the other thing. I'm getting a bit of crunchiness because I think everything is just up too loud because GarageBand kind of just holds your hand, whereas Logic is a little bit less hand holding. It assumes that you know how to gain stage. And you know what I haven't had to do for a very long time is gain stage. Uh, so what do we reckon about that high up bass? Uh, is that going to work with the mix? Hang on. That's the other thing. Um, I've got to get used to this cycling because it keeps going back to the start of the cycle. So that's sort of the variation there. Why don't we um, we'll mute that and we'll just do a quick variation on the bass here because again, it'll it'll help us practice our our uh, quick moving things around. We'll unmute that one. All right, so. So this is kind of a variation of the bass. All right, so let's just try it. We'll play it. We'll play uh, one time through with this bass. And then, hey, maybe we have two basses. Maybe we end up like, um, what was the band that had two basses? Uh, Primus? No, who was it? Prime? Well, there was a band here in Australia that had two different bassists, and uh, they sounded cool. Let's try this. Two, three, four. <laughs> So it needs to hang out on the hang, hang out on the first note there. So we'll just undo that. Uh, we'll come back to the here and we'll turn the bass up because I can't actually hear it while I'm playing. Yeah. All right. So let's just go with a very simple uh, sort of low down on the. Um, Yeah, so uh, we do need to uh, we do need to drop. What have I dropped? Yeah, I've got that way too low. So that's my output gain. This works the same way as it does in um, in our uh, other thing. So that doesn't matter how loud that is, does it? Because I'm definitely not clipping the signal on the way in. But I'm wondering if I should just. You know, I don't have much going in. I'm just going to dial down a little bit as well because I'm not. I, I want to make sure it's not me that's clipping it. Don't worry. I'll I'll, I'll look back on this and then go. Um. Yeah. Uh, I really didn't know what I was doing, did I? But you know what? You learn because I'll make these mistakes and then we'll be fine. But yeah, definitely got the uh, the clipping. Is that That's my overall bus, isn't it? So I'm actually, I'm clipping the bus overall. Okay, so we just need to make sure that everything comes down a bit here so we're not going to clip the bus overall. Otherwise, why do I get the feeling that I'm going to start just recording with a constant... Sounds a little like Everlong, yeah. Like, yeah. Something like that. Um, all right, so now, again, I, I've got to play around with this audio setup because I'm just going to come in here because I've got a bunch of latency now. More than I had before. So it's weird. I play around with a few few settings and then my latency seems to go through the roof. But we'll get there. Um, all right, let's... Um, I am recording over the other bass line. And look, I just wanted to show you how the takes work. <laughs> Didn't want to do that at all. I also messed it up. So let's go back to the correct track. Tips for young players. I love it. I, I meant to mention at the start, but you folks are going to be yelling at your screens. You're going to be calling me a noob. You're going to be saying all sorts of profanities because I'm going to make some pretty boneheaded mistakes. But the cool thing is you watching this means that if you ever go into Logic, you won't make these same boneheaded mistakes. And maybe you might learn something. Maybe me learning how to do things might actually help you somewhat. We'll see.
So yeah, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my notes here. So uh, recording volume and gain staging. This is I'm, I'm basically making notes about things uh, transposition so that I learn these before the next video and we can relearn together because I've got a feeling I'm recording way too hot uh, on this. And again, I think it's because GarageBand iOS and even GarageBand Mac kind of holds your hand a little bit more with that. But you can see the clipping going on here on my uh, master bus. That's not cool. You don't want that. So uh, yeah, everything needs to come down in the mix. Um, and I need to make sure because I don't think I'm recording anything over the, uh, again, the, the input gain is not coming in. So assuming that these are my output gains, my volumes, then uh, then it should be exactly the same as within GarageBand. But I think just everything. In fact, it's probably a good chance for us to go over to the mixer. Because the beautiful thing we have here in Logic is an actual mixer with a master fader. So we could even turn the master fader down, but that's kind of cheating. So we will, uh, at this stage, turn it back up. Uh, I did notice um, the double, double clicking. Oh, no, it does go back to zero. I'm a liar. No, it doesn't. It doesn't go back to zero when you double click on it, which is the function of most mixers that I've used before. They go back to zero. I think it's, it's is it like option click or something that goes back to zero? There's there's a button. I'm sure there is. Shift click. Oh, click. Yeah, there is. So it is. Uh, it is. It's option click that goes back to zero. Now, question. Question for those viewing live here. Do we go with the higher bass or the lower bass, or do we just throw them both on there and uh, and to say it's a double bass track? So the the higher bass sound we had was the one that was doing this. Oh, okay. We keep going back to that cycle. I kind of dig. And the lower bass. We could obviously use variations on these two. Yeah, I like the bass. I like the way the bass sits with the guitars there. It's a little bit cure. Friday, I'm in love. Don't you reckon Saturday? Hey. So let's turn off all monitoring. All monitoring is off. Cool. I don't mind the flashing mutes there. It does really show you. It really does highlight what you've got muted. That's kind of cool. Uh, what have we got? 18 minutes. Vocals? All right. Since you said so, let's, uh, let, let's play with some vocals. And by the end of this, we should have a little bit of a hookiness going on here, here in Logic Pro. Yeah, the flange sounds good, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, high bass for the first measures, then both, possibly. Uh, hello, Josh Gates Music. Uh, late to the party. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how we're going to go here. Um, I'm not blocking anything down the bottom left corner there with my silly melon, am I? No, I think we're good. Yeah, absolutely a bit of a cure. And I was, look, I was trying to make a rock track, but then I started playing around with these cool guitar tones and it came out with what it is. So, you know what? It is. It is what it is. Uh, yes, both. All right. Okay, well, let's um, let's just try it. Try putting both in here. So there's the first one and there's the second one. So if we just go there... Let's just uh, let's just experiment around with this. So if it does that, hang on. I think you're right. I think the intro is the high bass, and then it goes to both. This is a really good question from Ashley, and something that I need to uh, need to learn about myself. Does it auto save? I don't know. Let's let's hit save anyway. <laughs> I think so. I think it's got pretty good um, saving. I have to learn what again. Music tech help guy hasn't told me how to um how to do my version version control and and backing up and that sort of thing. So we'll see how we go. All right, let's um let's just try. I've got no lyrics for this yet, and I have no idea what this song is about. If you've got ideas, let me know. Drop it in the uh, chat here or in the comments if you're watching on the replay. But uh, we are going to set ourselves up a vocal track. So we're going to go new audio track, boom, and uh, voice. Now, what vocal shall we use to start? Experimental. Let's go straight into experimental. No. Uh, let's just go with tracking vocal. What does tracking vocal put on our vocal chain here? We can find out in the mixer. So it puts a channel EQ, it puts some compression and some more EQ. So that's it. It rolls off the bottom end. Doesn't look like it has any... Um, any other effects on that? In fact, can we look at it here? Yeah, there we go. We can look at it right here. So it doesn't have any uh, delay or reverb on there at all. So check one, two, three. What's the other problem? What else has Pete done here? He hasn't changed over to the other input. So we need to click input here. Go to input one. Check one, two, three. Ba, ba. So it does actually have a little bit of, it has a little bit, or is that just the compression? 
because um, it doesn't look like it has any delay or reverb on the chain here. Check, check. There's the echo, but that's off. We'll, uh, we'll use this because it, it kind of sounds good and it's called tracking vocals. So maybe it's uh, a tracking vocal for a reason. Let's, um, let's hit record on this and I'm just going to experiment and throw something random in here and see what happens. <laughs> like much of that but i liked that it was just way too la too uh high so do 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 i think it can be down do 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 when it does that chorus bit i think it can be like do 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 and then when we get to like a big final chorus i can octave it up and do both of them so uh, let's just try this do 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 yeah, I think it needs to be further down there. All right. So let's see where it logically needs a vocal to come in here. I think we definitely need a bit of that, that opening in here. Needs a Hey Girl, then it could be released right. Yeah, I reckon it's something like that. Um, some like that sort of uh, that sort of rhythm and melody. Um, let's um, just cut off the front of that. So that's a bit of an idea. <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm already hearing um, already hearing the uh, the the harmonies here. So let's um, let's just duplicate that one out. And we'll record in some harmonies. Um. <laughs> Yeah, something along those lines. I, I, I don't love it, but um, I'll, I'll come back to that and I'll play with it over time. Um, cool. Let's get the acoustic back and tune that one in and throw in, because I think this does need... What are we, 10 minutes? This does need... It does need a little bit of an acoustic bed. So I like the two of there. Um, there you go. Definitely should sing about love in some way, maybe in a more subtle way. Yeah, maybe I'll th sing about love for my MacBook Pro. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, it's got. It's, this is. I like it. It's crowded house. It's a bit smashing pumpkins. It's a little bit cure. Um, it definitely needs to be more of a a shoegaze, depressing kind of sound in in the nicest possible way. Depressing in the nicest possible way. <laughs> All right. So we need to uh, we need to track this. There we go. And uh, let's see how quickly we can tune this up now. Now that we know this uh, this epic tuner. 
Let's get this back into a proper tuning instead of this BS E flat stuff that I like to play in. Because that's the other problem. If I play it E flat, if I left it at E flat and tuned everything down, if I go to add keyboard parts, which I can definitely hear, I can hear some strings in this. I can hear some um, some piano, like some electric, or even some even some acoustic piano. This will this will be a good sort of tune and arrangement, I think, to test out some of the uh, virtual instruments here in Logic as well. At least I hope so. And if you've got ideas for this, by the way, if you're watching here live, if you're watching a man tuning a guitar, which I know is fascinating, then start throwing your ideas there. Like once the, uh, once the video's over, put them down in the comments, because this is going to be an ongoing series where every time we get together, I'll be looking back at what we did before and basically reading through any comments and ideas that you had. So by the end, this will be like a, a point, uh, a, a, uh, like a joint effort. Um, all right. So let's, um, I think we can do a subtle riff like that here for the um, acoustic now. I don't think we need it to do the chunk, chunk, chunks. I think the, the electrics can handle the chuggers and then we'll uh, we'll record it here. So uh, let's hit the record button. Oh. Alright. So I think we go... Like we do the. Nah. They will just change the strumming pattern here to make it a little bit different. Um, Could we do definitely the variation? We do need our metronome back on, so I know when to come in. <laughs> Should have put some extra guitars there at the start. Once again, clipping out the wazoo. Is that coming through with a real clip uh, at the other end? I'll turn the master track down anyway, just so, <laughs> so it doesn't look bad. Go away. Oh, what clipping? I never clipped. <laughs> you can't prove it. Uh, someone had the idea of a capo. Yeah, that's actually a really good idea. So let's um, let's duplicate that out and let's try a new track with duplicate settings because um, I think we can do something like that. So what are we in? We're in like a D shape. So it goes D, B minor, G, D, B minor, G. So if we do capo up, let's go up to like maybe the fifth fret. I think this is um I think this this might be a nice sound here. Let's try this. So we hit the record button again. We caper it up here on the fifth and we're gonna play an A shape with a little bit of a mute. I don't know. 
is that mm, that's something to consider maybe we don't have time to sort of play with that now but not bad Maybe for like a variation in a second verse, bringing in something like that. So we might leave it muted for now. Uh, what have we got solo? That one there. All right. How we go for time? We've got five minutes left. Uh, let's uh, unplug that one. Always unplug your acoustics. I left <laughs> the amount of times I leave my acoustic plugged in and all that does is drain your battery. If you've got a, a preamp, no, what a preamp, a, a pickup built in. Uh, let's save again. <laughs> this is the moment. It's called February Song. If you've got song ideas, uh, like Hey Girl, then uh, let me know. Um, so let's let's do a little bit of on the fly mixing for this one, shall we? <laughs> if your music sounds like other people's music, it just means you're doing it right. Right. I say this often, people come to me and they're like, Pete, my song, it sounds too much like insert name of band here. And I'm like, do you like that band? Yes. Okay. How many notes are there in a scale? 12. All right. Guess what? They use them and so do you. People worry way too much about it. Now, <laughs> I must admit, like, th this, is where, this is where I sort of go and start to freak out because this is a different sort of layout. Like I... I don't use mixes like this for any of my music production. And this is going to be, this is going to take some getting used to. Because look, you, there's, there's EQ on everything. There's compressors, there's amp sims. And you can come in here and we can play with all this stuff and look at all of those options. Like the reason that I haven't tried this before is that I'm overwhelmed by the options and all the different plugins and all the different things we have in here. Now, do I have to use them all? No. And I think that's the other thing. Like they, these are being bust out here. Uh, to to up to to buses, and I don't even know what's on those buses. So when this one's going out to bus three, I'm like, I, I don't know, I don't know what. It's. Okay, so these are all reverbs. Ah, so that's why we had amp. So you know, before when I was saying, why did I seem to have vocals? Why did my vocals seem to have some um, reverb on them? It's because I was recording them here. Uh, with with the vocals, and it was actually bussing them out to bus three and to bus five, which I'm assuming, even though I can't actually see which ones are which. Oh, there we go, bus three. So yeah, it was going out to an ambience on bus three and bus five is a small plate reverb. So yeah, these are the sort of things that are all happening behind the scenes because every time you add a preset or do something, then yeah, that's where it's at. Uh, hello, Lily Pillies, by the way. Hello, Mr. Lily Pillies. Hello, Mr. Back from Doing Time. Uh, hello, anyone who, uh, who hasn't missed the start. But we will definitely be uh, be doing more on this. So uh, let's let's see if we can do a little bit of mixing here. We'll drop this down just so that we can get to our, our faders and play through and just, um, yeah, just see if we can get a balance. In fact, let's do a faders up. Let's just do a faders up mix in uh, for this, just uh, so we can watch our main uh, channel and we can make sure that we're not clipping on anything. Uh, we'll turn off our monitoring there. Uh, these are all of our buses, so that's all good. And uh, I'm so not used to this bus business. All right, let's, uh, let's play this uh, and we'll, we'll, slow, we'll bring up each uh, different thing and we'll uh, see how it all works. So, and we'll actually, we'll shimmy some things around. So, because this is our base. Can we move it by just, no, how do we move it? Click and drag, no. <gasps> That's cool. I could hear just a little bit of the, um... all right. So we'll bring our drums in. We'll bring our uh, bass, which is over here. Uh, other bass. <laughs> Getting some weird crackles going on there. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to uh, adjust what I use here. Let's um, let's go to the preference here and let's give ourselves um, let's give ourselves a buffer size of 512. That should improve when we're mixing here because we don't need to worry about latency for the time being. All right, let's bring those guitars back in. Back to here. Let's 
Hey girl. <laughs> it could actually be the actual Hey Girl song. Hey girl, you da 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 da. Hey girl, da 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 da. Hey girl, da 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 da. Like a a call and response. Do you reckon that could work for the vocals? Let me know what you think. Uh, thanks for hanging out here today, folks. That's an hour of logic. Uh, the right guitar is not fully panned. Is that is that the case? Uh, oh, it's not. It's, it's 60, 63. Uh, that's 64. How does that even work? Why won't it go? Oh, that's just how it is. Um, yeah, so I think I think it needs to be uh, needs to be some Hey Girl. This could be the Hey Girl song. So uh, we'll uh, we'll see how we go with that. Thank you all for hanging out here. Uh, if you do want to uh, know any of the other things going on around here, head over to the Patreon. If you're not already a patron, huge thanks to my patrons who enable me to do this sort of stuff and play around with this sort of gear and have some fun with Logic Pro. If you too are Mac curious or Logic curious and you want to see how I go, you want to see all the the the, the wins, the losses, the falls, and the the, the getting back ups again then uh, do stay tuned to this series. We will be back again um, probably tomorrow, actually. I haven't actually planned this out. I think we'll sneak another show in tomorrow in between uh, Jade and Thomas. I'll be uh, I'll be in a Jade and Thomas sandwich, which is what I do on uh, on Thursdays or Wednesday afternoons um, uh, a lot of the week. So I'm looking forward to continuing on with this song, and I hope you can join me for that the next time around. As we say at the end of every show, please be kind to yourself, be kind to others, keep creating. Go Logic. Let's do it. Let's Let's go out with this song. So yeah.